guys, this is Pyram. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how to make our own Linux uh, virtual system, uh, which is really useful if you have Windows on your computer and you want to have a separate uh, virtual box which has Linux running on it, but you don't want to reformat your whole computer so that it's a Linux all the time. You want to still have the access to of uh, Windows, or the access to Windows, I should say, probably. Um, so, first thing you're going to need to do is go ahead and Google Virtual Box, okay, all one word. It's made by um, Sun Microsystems, and all you need to do is go to Downloads, and download, uh, well, in this case, I would get the one for Windows, because I am... Uh, running Windows on this computer, and I'm assuming most people who are watching this are also running Windows, so go ahead and grab Windows, um, and it, I think it works for both 32 and 64, no matter what, uh, it works for both with just the one file that you download here, I think. Uh, anyways, go ahead and download that and install it. Now, once you start it up, you're going to see you have a new thing on your computer. When you open it up, it will look something like this, okay? Uh, that's something else, don't worry about that. Uh, now, before you can make your, um, you can see I've already got one there, before you can make your own uh, virtual box, basically, a virtual system, you need to download the uh, ISO file, which will allow you to, which would if you burnt it to a disk and then put it in a computer would start the setup for um, making for installing that type of Linux onto your computer. You need to download that ISO file. Now I'm going with the Ubuntu ISO file which is the 9.04 desktop edition. Okay, And so uh, it's a pretty good uh, I mean, Ubuntu is a good distro. I like it a lot. I use it. I mean, I don't use it much, so I don't really have much experience. I don't have much Linux experience, so I'm not the best guy to ask about what distro to use. I've only ever actually used Ubuntu. I haven't used any of them, so... But I can vouch for Ubuntu as far as I've gone with it. So, um, all you need to do to get that one, that's, how, that's what I'm going to show you how to get, is go ahead and search Ubuntu again on Google, go to the Ubuntu homepage, click the download here, well for me it's got a big banner, if it doesn't for you it should just be down by the side here, it will say get Ubuntu, download Ubuntu now, blah blah blah, you get the point. Uh, select the location and you know wherever and click begin download. It's quite a big file, I think it's about 700 megs, okay, so it might take a while depending on your connection. Um, but once you've got that, you can then start the stuff in the VirtualBox app, okay? So what you need to do is create a new VirtualBox. Um, now I'm going to run you through the steps quickly. You need to first give your computer a name. This doesn't really matter too much, I'm just going to call it Test Linux, okay? Then you select Linux as the operating system and the version is Ubuntu. 64-bit um, don't worry about that really. Uh, you can see it's got most of the other mainstream Linux distributions um, and then it's just got you know the 2 point whatever version so you can work it out from there pretty much. Uh, we're going with Ubuntu though and then go ahead and click next. Now um, you need to decide on your memory size. Now there's a little thing I need to tell you about here. I've written it down somewhere. Let me just check there's um, basically a way you are supposed to allocate memory uh, depending on how much memory you have. Okay, here we go. So if you have uh, 512 or less megabytes of RAM, which you probably have more than in these days, um, on your computer installed, then only give the computer or this virtual machine, only give it 256 megabytes on here. Um, although it says the rec okay, actually, don't give it 256, give it 384, that's wrong. If you have more, a gigabyte or more, give it 512 megs, okay? It doesn't really need any more than 512. 
uh, and it works fine with 512, so I'm going to give it 512, okay? And that's megs as well, it does it in megs. Uh, so if you want to give it more than a gig, you don't just put one, because that will give it one megabyte um, of space. You need to type in what's a gig, and it's 1024. So 1024 would be... I know it's one gig is a thousand, but... Um, because it's powers of 2, you know, if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, but powers of 2 means it's 1024, so if you want a gig, put 1024. Um, but 512 for me. Now next, we need to create a virtual disk image, is what it's called, it's a .vdi file, um, and so don't select to use existing hard disk, select to create new hard disk, basically uh, leave it as it is here. Go ahead and click next. It's going to bring up a new wizard, and you want to—you'll probably want to make it fixed size. If you make it dynamically expanding, basically it means um, it will. Oh, actually, that's not what I thought it was. Okay, go with dynamically expanding then. Uh, fixed size basically means I'll d explain it to you. I didn't actually realize. You can see it here anyway, but I'll explain it. Dynamically means it has a limit, but to start off with, it will only take up as much as it needs to. So to start off with, it might only take up 2 gigs. Um, but then as you have more files, as you install more stuff, you know, you get the point. Uh, it will grow, but then once it hits that limit of, let's say, 10 gigs, it won't grow anymore. Fixed size means it will take up that space from the very beginning. Okay, So that's where it is. So go with dynamically expanding. Uh, now here you need to specify the um, size. It says it suggests eight gigs. I'm gonna go with eight gigs. Uh, I'm gonna put it in a place I've put. I have a special place for my uh, VDIs, so I'm just gonna call it test underscore Linux dot VDI. Test underscore Linux underscore HDD. Okay, save that. Uh, and so you can specify where you want to save it to, of course, then click next, finish. Okay, there you go. That's pretty much created your virtual box. That's all you really need to do. Um, as far as setting up in virtual box goes, I know with when I first set up my own virtual uh, machine, it was a lot more complicated than this. And I found out about this, I was relieved, okay? But anyway, before we start it up now, actually, I said that was all we needed to do. That's not quite all we need to do. We need to do one more thing. Remember we downloaded this um, ISO file? We need to, because um, if we start it up now, let me show you what happens. Okay, blah, blah, blah. First runtime wizard. Uh, let's cancel this for the moment. And we'll just see what happens if um, we don't tell it to do anything. It says no bootable medium found. Okay? That's because... At the moment, we have something which is designed to um, have Linux run on it, but it doesn't actually have Linux installed on it yet. So we need to tell it to put to um, to accept uh, a file as the CD. Well, in this case, it will, it's called mounting a CD dash DVD drive or mounting an ISO image file. We're going to mount an ISO image file as if this was a disk. Basically, an I ISO is a um, an, a disk image, okay? And it acts as if it's a disk. And you can mount it, um, which is basically a way of putting this file into a disk drive, but into a virtual disk drive, basically. Okay, so that's what we're doing here. We're putting it into a virtual disk drive, um, which will be read when we start our machine. So now let's run it. And if all is well, yeah, we got the the setup wizard. So now we can freely install Ubuntu. I'm going to go ahead and pause this well I'll stop it altogether actually, but then I'll restart it when this is finished, okay guys? So one sec.